This episode is sponsored by the Interesting People podcast, available now on Spotify and on all good podcasting apps. Check out the show notes if you want a direct link to that one. Hello and welcome to Film Pro Productivity and Success. Welcome back. And this is the podcast that helps film professionals and other creative people, all creative people really, to live a more focused, effective, and I like to think a happier life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 118, The Devils in the Detail. The difference between something good and something great is attention to detail, Charles are swindle, unquote. And the devil's in the detail, or the devil is in the details, is a, it's another way of putting the same thing, is an idiom which indicates that although something may seem simple, the details are in fact complicated and likely to cause problems. And it comes from the earlier phrase, God is in the details, expressing the idea that whatever one does should be done thoroughly. And I can think of countless occasions when this idiom could have come into play, but I'll give you just a few examples from this year alone. I'm currently shooting a TV show, which I won't name for, for legal reasons. I do want to get re-employed. But I was asked to stage an action sequence where someone is shot in the chest and collapses to the ground. For a reminder to those of you that are just joining me for the first time, I'm a fight coordinator. I direct fight sequences for film and television and theatre and things like that. So that's why I was asked to do it. But... um. Yeah, the, the instruction I had from production was that it was a relatively simple affair which could be done with a thin mat or knee pads when the actor falls. But when I was told about this and about I'm getting shot in the chest and fall, falling over, I thought, this doesn't quite ring true. You see, I, I know the production and uh, it's it's in its third season now and it's a slightly heightened world. It's stylistically just not quite reality. It's a little bit higher than reality if that makes sense creatively speaking and I suspected that perhaps there was more to what was going to be going on there so I was on set staging something else uh, a couple of nights ago and I mentioned it to the director you know this killing was coming up and how would he like to see it done and he looked at me surprised when I explained that the uh, you know the production had told me that they wanted him shot in the chest and it was just to collapse basically um, but he, the director says, no, no, that's absolutely not the case. I want him to be shot in the forehead and I want him to fall straight back. Now, that is a completely different uh, interpretation of what is on the page. But the director, it, his vision is the one that counts and to some extent the, the producers as well. But the director, I went to him directly because I needed to know exactly what he was going to shoot. And as I say, it just turned out to be a completely different thing than I had been led to believe. And now this, the fact that he has to fall straight back, this means that he'd need to fall onto a deep crash mat and uh, that the gun that fires at him will have to be fired in a different shot because we can't put, you know, a, a firearm or a replica, or I think it's actually a, a, a genuine firearm that's going to fire a blank. We can't put that in someone's face. It's, it's going to hurt them, kill them potentially. Uh, so there's a, a big difference between getting shot in the chest and shot in the face, <laughs> which is what this is coming down to. But anyway, I had to kind of speak to the uh, armourer and we've discussed it and we'll have to get the gun shot in a separate clean shot with no other actors in it from the guy falling over that's getting hit in the head. But um, had I listened to production, I would have turned up with entirely the wrong kit. I would have t turned up with a thin mat and some knee pads, probably something like that. And although I do carry more stuff, a big thick mat is not something I want to be putting into my car on the off chance that it might be required. So I would definitely not have brought that. But this minor detail, the thinking that a killing is just a killing and it's all going to be really easy, would have led to some serious problems on the day, not only for me, but for the armour as well. And this is what I mean when I speak about the devil being in the details. That detail where this guy is shot and how he collapses to the ground was damned important. And I was given the wrong instruction on that one. Luckily, I know my job and I caught it before we got there. But what if I had just been turning up for that one day? What if the armourer had not known anything about it either? We would be turning up there with the wrong stuff and we would not have been able to deliver what is required of us. It's worth me doing an episode on. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Strategy equals execution. 
all the great ideas and visions in the world are worthless if they can't be implemented rapidly and efficiently. Good leaders delegate and empower others liberally, but they pay attention to details every day. Colin Powell, unquote. And another story here is from one of my regular listeners is, is uh, local Scottish filmmaker Ryan Hendrick, and he came across a particular problem. He's probably sweating as I'm I'm telling this story now. Don't don't worry, Ryan. Calm down. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything bad, but this this is this is another good example of the devil being in the details. And he, ha- he came across this particular problem in a scene in his latest feature film, Mercy Falls. And I don't think he'll mind me talking about it here. I'll maybe give him a heads up before it goes, <laughs> goes out. But anyway, there was this scene where one of the female cast was going to be in her underwear in this hotel room. It was nothing seedy. It was just a private scene in the world of the film. And Ryan decided it was best just to let his costume designer and the actress herself, who's also a listener to this show, I'm hasten to add, the actress herself decide what she should wear in that scene. And it sounds logical. It sounds like he was being gentlemanly and so on. And it totally makes sense. I would have done the same thing myself. But here's where it comes down to details. So it comes, it comes to this scene during filming and he's not seen what she's going to wear. And he starts shooting it up until the point where the actress has to turn and leave the scene when he realises that, he may have realised it beforehand, but he was stuck trying to shoot it anyway, he realises that um, she's actually in a thong, and well, let's just say that it revealed a bit more of her bottom than he was expecting in this particular scene, and it was far too late though for him to do anything about it. So, anyway, he completes that scene, but later on in the film, she's going to be in her underwear again, and there's no, again, there's nothing serious about this, it's just a film, uh, not that sort of film, it's a horror film and it's a very good one, uh, but just the way the script went it meant that she had to um, do another scene in her underwear as it happened, it was a swimming scene or something like this. Anyway, he took the opportunity to change the bottom half of her underwear into a less revealing sort of shorts, pants thing instead, and that was that, so he solved that problem for that later scene. That's that until he gets into the edit, of course, and remembers that the earlier the earlier costume, I'll call it for want of a better word, blunder, um, which uh, just didn't feel right for the scene. Uh, I think there was a possible risk, perhaps, that it may have caused a laugh, in fact, something like that, which is really not what you're wanting when you're trying to do a serious scene in a horror movie. But anyway, if he'd taken some control of this before filming, he would have been able to circumvent this problem before it became an issue. And... He had a devil of a time solving it. He tried cutting uh, around it, but he didn't have an option. He had to leave you know, that particular shot in. And he considered digitally, we discussed digitally covering covering her as she exits with the same shorts that she wears later on. But that's a nightmare. You know, it's a, it's a lot of work to do in post-production to solve a small problem. But in the end, he looked at his edit and he realised that actually he didn't need the scene at all. So it was solved that way. Um, and the details of the underwear choice weren't the reason the scene that was cut uh, incidentally, but cutting it did solve the problem uh, that he had sweated some blood over. And again, that's a, I could totally see myself falling into that one, and that little detail caused him a considerable amount of uh, worry and concern later on, and I think it's all resolved and moving on now um, swimmingly. But, you know, the devil is in the detail. Just another little recent story that I thought might help to highlight what I'm talking about here. Productivity and efficiency can be achieved only step by step by sustained hard work, relentless attention to details and insistence on the highest standards of quality and performance. J.R.D. Tata, unquote. And that's just two examples, but there are millions that I could reference. This, This problem is the line in a contract or an agreement that you issue to someone or that you sign to to give away your power or your ownership over something that you create and I can give you another example on this one because two thirds of the contracts that were originally issued on my feature film Fast Romance had to get reissued after we'd completing completed shooting when the director of photography Ross Gary and myself spotted that they'd been issued in error by well I won't name them because it's not nice to do that but a key member of the production company who'd never really understood what she was doing in the first place in regards to contracts. And in in effect, she ended up sending out two-thirds of the contracts with the wrong version of the accompanying articles. 
And that's a problem because they were actually articles relating to, I think, maybe the actors' contracts, whereas maybe one third of the contracts was for crew and maybe another third was for uh, other types of releases, like maybe background artists or perhaps location releases or something like that. But all all of those, those two thirds, and it was a lot of contracts, had to get re-sent out and re uh, redone, and that's a big, big problem. By the way, if you've shot something, that, let's say you shot a movie, and you you had some problem with some of the crew or some of the cast, or that one of the locations was causing bother because they weren't happy with something you'd done, even though you'd tried your best to make it work. Going back after the fact to try and get someone to to sign a contract is not only hard work; it could actually end up being a major problem for the film itself. But anyway, if she'd taken the time to understand these contracts in the first instance, we wouldn't have had to resolve the issue after we'd completed filming. You know, obviously, I was directing the film and, and Ross was director of photography on the film, so we were busy during the shoot and couldn't really get too involved in the administrative stuff. Anyway, I could go on, but you get the idea. Small mistakes can create mountains of work later on in whatever process or task or situation that you find yourself in. And if you don't take care of these details, the little intricate parts of whatever it is that you do that may never be fully appreciated by others later on, I hasten to add later on in the process, but that will bloom into serious issues if you miss them, then whatever it is that you're doing could fall apart or at the very least become an unmanageable problem or a tremendous pain in the ass for you to sort out later on. Other details that you might not consider in regard to um, the devil being in the detail... Uh, will also uh, have an impact in your success. And these are things like um, remembering people's names is an important little thing, or thanking others for their contributions, or, or keeping a secret that someone has included you in, or small acts of kindness and just thinking about others. These details aren't the first thing that comes to mind when you consider this subject that I'm talking about here today, but they are the little things that enrich the lives of others and these little details, these little positive things that you do could make a a huge difference to your success and your reputation. And to some extent, you need to experience failure based on this whole premise in order to avoid larger problems later in life. That can be said about many productivity things, but um, that's no real issue if you're willing to fail your way forward, of course, as they say, you know, failing forward, making those mistakes so that you're learning from them. And one thing you could consider doing to avoid this problem is to consider creating a minimum viable product, test product or test project uh, out of your theories or your ideas before you go on to try and make it all happen. And this, an example of this would be any filmmaker who later goes on to make a feature might make a short film in the same style or tone or genre or th- or with some of the same characters that they plan to use in that uh, feature so before they go all in on you know a year's worth of their life doing a feature they might do six or ten weeks on a, a short film version and solve a lot of these smaller problems that they might not be able to see coming in the future failing forward is the ability to get back up after you've been knocked down learn from your mistakes, and move forward in a better direction. John C. Maxwell, unquote. And that's today's call to action. If you have something big that you want to do, what's the smallest version of that thing that you could put together right now that will teach you valuable lessons from which you can learn how to do it better next time? Attention to detail is the secret of success in every sphere of life and little kindnesses, little acts of consideration, little appreciations, little confidences, they are all that are needed to keep the friendship sweet. Hugh Black, unquote. And that's all for this week's show, but in next week's episode I'll be doing a show that was prepped prior to lockdown, yet another one, and this one has been researched and written by Christina Littleson, and it's all about technology addiction. So finally perhaps I can come up with a solution to my definite YouTube addiction. And and I'll just add here as well that the podcast that was promoted at the top of this show, the Interesting People podcast, is presented by Christina So please check it out. There are going to be links in the show notes uh, and there's some great interviews in there, some really, really interesting uh, ones, plenty of them as well. So I hope that's uh, good for you today. I hope to see you there. But in the meantime, I'm going to end with some words from John Wooden who said that it's the little details that are vital. 
Little things make big things happen. Now take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting, and join me next time on Film Pro Productivity and Success. And the music that you can hear right now is Adventures by Ihimitsu. And the executive producer for th- for this season is my good friend Christopher McPhillips from Artos Digital. Please check the show notes for more info on them. And you can listen to you can see the show notes by the way on uh, all of the apps. But uh, go to the, the website. <laughs> this is not going well. Go to the website <laughs> filmproproductivity.com and you'll see a full transcript of the show as well. And if you feel like it, why not check out the show on uh, LinkedIn? There is a page just for us there. Or go to any one of the other places. This has rambled on a bit, hasn't it? Anyway, see you next week.